Right, so if you're a beginner to Mechanism, I'm going to show you how to use Mechanism, what is the purpose of Mechanism, and basically cool features that Mechanism offers, because let me tell you, Mechanism is one of the best mods in Minecraft. So let's just get started. Right, so to get started with Mechanism, the first thing I recommend doing is getting a heat generator. Right, then once you get a heat generator, just place it down. Once you actually place it down, as the name suggests, it is a heat generator. So to get energy, we need to put something that burns or can give us energy from heat, for example, lava, coal, or even a coal block. And there is other stuff like oil, but that basically I'll speak about later on. So as an example, I just want to show you the difference between a lava bucket and a coal. So if I put one coal into this heat generator, it's going to burn it and process it into energy. But as you can see, the energy processed or the energy that this gives us is technically nothing. 1.7k units is nothing. Now, the more units, the better, right? So if I put one lava bucket instead, as you can see, this is going to go all the way to 27,000 units, right? So as you can see, this is way better than coal because coal is harder to get than lava because lava is anywhere on the map. Now, I also wanted to show you the total energy stored. So this is basically how good of this source or basically energy this is. Coal says it has total energy stored 32,000 EU. If you hover over crude oil, it has 200k units. So oil is also accessible on the map. So if you can find lava, you can also use oil. Then we have lava, which is the best source because it has 400,000 units. And then we also have wood. So if you have like maybe lots of wood, maybe you have stacks and stacks because of um, automated farms, you can use wood. So obviously I'm leaving this to you, but if you want to check if something is a good energy source, you just have to hover over and then it will show you what has what how many units now also if you don't want to really play around with putting stuff into the heat generator what you can do is you, you can do a completely passive setup right so the way this works is basically we have three heat generators i think you can put more than this but three is absolutely fine to create some energy then we have lava flowing all over the heat generators which can get energy from so if you do this basically if you put lava on top of the heat generators it can also get energy and then basically from this it's just giving us energy to the energy cube and storing it for later so as you can see it's going going pretty fast so we have already nearly 300,000 units and, and if i take for example this bit coal as you can see it's going to smell obviously it's slow because there's no upgrades but the purpose of me showing you this that it is a very very good setup if you don't want to play around with putting stuff into your heat generator okay so now i'm going to break down the renewable energy or green energy so what we have here is we have a solar generator the solar generator is better than the heat generator as it produces as you can see it produces way faster it produces 46 fe per take and overall it doesn't require anything apart from the sunshine or daytime to work it does not work during the night because there's no way to get the energy from right so it does not work during the night so now what we have is an advanced solar generator which is the upgraded version of the small one and basically i'm pretty sure it's just four solar panels in one and um, also produces 400 fe per tick so that is a lot also as you can see it has one mfe um, cell battery so that is a lot as you can see it actually fills up very very quickly but you need to remember that this only produces energy during the daytime and basically when the sunshine is out it does not produce any energy at night so if you want to use these um, i would actually recommend just setting maybe four of those and you should be absolutely fine for some time now the wind generator as you may think this basically is the taller the better or the higher the better so i'll show you in a second the production up there so on the ground what we have here is we have a small cell battery it only has 80k fe the power generation is 104 fe but the thing is with the gin wind generator it produces basically energy all day long it doesn't matter if it's day or night it keeps producing the energy right so it says 104 fe on the ground the level is 64 if i go all the way up there it should be right so this is about 50 blocks up and if you actually open up the menu it says 155 fe so you can see the difference that if you put it up higher it creates more energy right so both of these generators have advantages and disadvantages you can obviously mix them together you can have like four solar generators and then like four wind generators just remember to plug them into like an energy cube or somewhere else to store the energy because any excess energy so like if they're full and basically they're just making keep making energy any excess or extra energy is going to get stored into your energy cube which can be used for later purposes 
Now, I also just want to touch on energy cubes, which are very, very important. And overall, I would say they are probably the best thing that has happened in Mechanism. So basically, energy cube is just what it sounds like. It's an energy cube that stores energy at the top. As you can see, it stores 1.6 million MFE. And also in Mechanism, the better the tier, like the better the energy cube is or something is because there's actually tiers that apply to nearly anything so as you can see it says advanced energy cube it stores 6.4 million mfe elite to 25.6 and then ultimate 102 and also cabling as you can see it says basic advanced and elite and ultimate so there's tiers to nearly anything in mechanism elite and ultimate and this the same goes for basically the machinery so the ultimate is the most powerful machine as you can see and this is the highest tier so as you can see, this can crush nine things at once. And also, obviously, the higher the tier, the more costly it gets or more or more expensive it gets to actually craft this machine. But also you get something in return. You get a pretty powerful machine. And this is actually the same thing for like if I do ultimate, uh, as you can see, it's this ultimate smelting factory, which is just a smelter. So as you can see, you can smelt nine things at once. So very, very nice. Now also in mechanism, we have something called side configuration. So as you can see, if I put a cable at the top, it actually connects, but like at this side, it doesn't connect. Now there's a reason for that. So if you actually open up the cube, if you come to side configuration, which is this, and as you can see, it says like top, left, right, bottom, sorry, this is bottom and front. And as you can see, there's a cable here, right? So this tells us this is the front and there's a cable here. So basically what we need to do is we actually have to change this. So as you can see, it says none. So if I press left click, it says input. So now the energy starts flowing into the cube, right? So this is important because some um, machines need to be configured or they need to be changed or they won't work. We can also change this to actually like, for example, input, output or input, output. So if you, for example, want to build a bank of energy cubes, you can actually do this with these side configurations, right? Or if you, for example, want to only have a one-way configuration, you can do that with these sides. One more thing I just wanted to mention about energy cubes is you can actually just pick them up and they don't lose energy, which means you can actually just take them to, like, to a different dimension, like Nether. You can use it with machines or like Digital Miner, which I'm going to show you later in the video, and it will still work, right? It's just remember that obviously if you don't, if it's like a small one, so like the basic one, it might run out of the electricity pretty quickly. Quickly. Now, also another reason why Mechanism is one of the best mods is it allows you to multiply your ores. Now, the maximum, I'm pretty sure you could probably get more, but the maximum multiplication as you can do is up to five times, which means from one ore, you can get it up to five times. So you can get five iron ingots from one iron ore. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do that because it's a very, very long process. And I would say it's just too complicated for a beginner. So I'm going to show you up to three times ore processing, which you can set up. So I'm going to show you, first of all, basic double ore processing so to double ore process we just need an enrichment chamber and if you just put your iron ore in that you're going to get something called iron dust and as you can see we got two iron dust so if i put this into energized smelter uh, we basically get double ores right so i put one iron ore and as you can see from the energy smelter we get double right so we get two now also as you can see the machine is very very slow we can actually solve this by adding speed upgrades. So if you actually come to the right corner, it says upgrades. And at the bottom, you can actually check because as you can see, this filter upgrade is actually not supported. So you need to look which upgrades are supported, but most of the machines do in fact support the speed upgrade. So to speed up the whole operation, what we can do is we can put the speed upgrades. You can only put eight maximum. And if you actually hover over the speed upgrade, it says amount eight out of eight. And it says effect 16 times. So if you actually come back to the menu, as you can see, it's going extremely fast. Right, so now I'm going to show you how to get three times ore processing with a fortune. And in a second, I'm going to show you how to get basically quadruple or even more than that ores with fortune. But let me just show you, first of all, how to get it with the machines. So all of these machines need to be powered. I'm going to show you all of these machines in a second. So first of all, what we have is we have a free block water and then to the water, it goes to an electric electric pump. The electric pump then is pumping water and oxygen into something called electrolytic separator. Then electrolytic separator is pumping oxygen into something called purification chamber. And then the purification chamber, let me just put one more into this. Then the purification chamber is basically multiplying the ores into something called energized smelter. 
then the energy smelter is smelting everything and I have it automatic to basically just output into the chest. Now the thing is with this setup it's basically good for beginners but once you actually get to fortune especially that the mod pack I'm playing on allows you to get fortune 5 if you actually so if I actually get iron ores and I place three of them right so let me just throw this away if I destroy one it only gives me four if I take this one it gives me so that gives me six and this one gave me additional three so we have 13. now if I put all of these into the chest and basically these machines what they will do is they'll actually double it so from 13 we're going to get 26 ores so you can get basically half a stack from three ores if you have fortune but obviously fortune is a bit difficult to get and definitely you cannot get it within within like couple minutes of playing you can get these machines within like half an hour you should get the setup so um, if you if you can get a fortune get this setup and then you can get quadruple or even more like you can get double ores with what you mine now if you would like to copy my setup all you have to do is just go to the electrolytic separator first go to site configuration make sure that you go to chemicals and then you just need to output the oxygen to the what's it called a purification chamber then the purification chamber just has to get the items to the energy smelter so make sure it's on the output make sure it's items it says items and whatever category you're in it says at the top and then just if you want to copy just put a chest at the top if you go to site configuration just make sure it's output on the top and if you want to input you need to put a hopper and then a chest and it will just automatically go into it all right so this is how you set up it's actually very very simple now for the last part of this video i'm going to show you something called a digital miner which is one of the best things in mechanism because this allows you to remotely get any resource in the game it doesn't actually you can actually do it anywhere outside of the overworld dimension so you can actually set this up in the nether as well or any other dimension they may have so the way this works is just needs power and um, as i said that's why also where a cube might be useful so like the ultimate energy cube right here might be useful because if you have one of these you can set it up anywhere in the world so what we can do is we can actually set up this digital miner to mine us any resource in the game right so if you actually open up the digital miner what you get is you'll get presented with a menu so i'm going to break all of these options down or at least the most important options because i don't think everything here is technically useful for you as a beginner especially so i'm just going to show you the most important options so first of all we have is we have start stop configuration and reset so if i let this run and i stop it as you can see the configuration button is grayed out the reason is because we have to reset the machine so if you reset it as you can see the configuration button is back to use now just before i continue i just want to show you one important upgrade apart from the speed and energy upgrades which i highly recommend to get because the energy can sometimes run out very very quickly if you don't upgrade the digital miner one important upgrade here is the anchor upgrade why is this upgrade so important if you actually don't put the anchor upgrade your machine will not work if you go outside of the chunk right so basically how this works is if you want this machine to work like when you teleport somewhere else you need to keep the chunk loaded right so this is why i'm saying the anchor upgrade is very very important because right so what we also get is we get three additional options so i'm going to break all of these three down so what we get is we get silk touch i'm gonna to assume most of you guys know what silk touch is but if you don't know what silk touch is silk touch is basically like when you break stone you know how cobblestone falls out what you can do is you can make stone fall out. That's what Silk Touch does, right? It just makes the block fall out instead of breaking it down. We also have auto pull and we have auto eject. So what basically auto eject does is basically, as you can see, all the iron that it's mining, it's going into chest into this chest right here. I broke it. So basically what this port does is basically this is the output port. So anything that you put, like if you put a chest here, anything that's mined or like comes out of the digital miner, it's just going to go into this chest. As you can see, it's keep going up. Now auto pull, it, what it does, it basically allows you to replace the block that the digital miner is mining. So if I actually stop this machine and I come to the configuration, as you can see, I'm mining the iron ore. What I can do is I can mine the iron ore and I can replace it with something. In this case, I just replaced it for the tutorial purposes with cobblestone, right? But you can replace it with anything. You can replace it with sand if you want to, right? So if I'm replacing it with cobblestone, what I can do is I can put a chest at the top and I can just put cobblestone and then the digital miner will automatically take all the cobblestone 
and it will replace what it has mined with cobblestone. There is also an additional upgrade. What you can do is you can use the stone generator upgrade so you don't actually have to put cobblestone. But just for the tutorial purposes, I just put cobblestone. You can obviously change it. You can actually use this upgrade if you want to. It is up to you. So now I need to show you the last part, which is the configuration of the actual digital miner. So I'm going to show you basically these options. I recommend setting these options first as these, these are the most important options. And it is also important that you set these options correctly because because otherwise you're not going to get like the best performance of the digital miner. So as you can see, it says block radius. So if I actually go back and I'm going to enter this visual zone, it actually shows you. So this is the radius. So see the square? This is the radius. How big do you want this basically square to be? So I have a set it to the highest, which is 32. You cannot set it higher than 32. You can actually set a lower. As you can see, this square is much smaller now. So I'm going to set it back to 32. Now here is the height. So what is the lowest level that you would like the digital miner to mine at? I recommend setting it to minus 64 because this goes like beyond like the, the deep slate level and then also the maximum level. You can actually set this to like maybe I'm going to set it like 70, which is going to be uh, just slightly above. You can actually set it. I mean, if you're going to set it somewhere very, very high, maybe in the mountain, then setting it to like 250 might be useful. But for me in this case, not really, so I'm going to set it back to 70. Okay, so now we actually need to set the stuff that we want to mine. And there's actually three options. This is a bit different from done from the previous tutorial I made. So I'm going to show you again. Item stack is the easiest probably one, but it requires us to actually have the item in the first place. So as you can see, it requires us to have the item. So if I save it, now I have gold ore. Also, what we can do is we can do tags. So if I actually put a star and I put emerald, what this is going to do is actually going to take all the emerald ores in this game. So even if you have other mods, this could be useful that you actually select it with this, uh, this tag, right? So if I set it to star iron, yeah, that's, it works. So if you set it with, actually, as you saw two seconds ago, it actually showed you nether ores as well, right? So if you have other dimensions or other mods, it could be useful that you set it to star and then the ore. And if I actually set it to run, as you can see, it tells you how many ores there is. So 1,200, right? Right, and that'll be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I'll try to answer as soon as possible. And don't forget to check my other content. And peace. Thank you for watching.